Gucci Mane has been jailed for 39 months. That's over three years. His crime? Having a gun. That's it. He didn't do anything dangerous with the gun. He just had one. Well, he's not allowed, according to the authorities. Yeah, all of them have guns. So uh, this story from Atlanta, from page6.com. The Associated Press reports that rapper Gucci Mane has been sentenced to serve three years and three months in prison after pleading guilty to a federal firearms charge several months ago. The 34-year-old, whose real name is Radrick Davis, pleaded guilty in May to a charge of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon after reaching, reaching an agreement with prosecutors. The judge also sentenced him to serve three years of supervised release with limitations on his travel during that time and to pay a $5,000 fine. Police reports said that a friend of Davis called police early September 14th to report that the rapper was walking down the street behaving violently. Police say Davis threatened them and that he was, uh, and that when they arrested him, they found he had a loaded handgun. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Um, I wish that he weren't threatening them. I wish his friend didn't call the police on him. Isn't there some? If you're somebody's friend, don't call the police on your friends. Friends don't call friends. Friends don't call police on friends. You find some other way to resolve it. Someone's your friends acting violently. You stop them yourself. I mean, I don't know how violently he was acting. If he was waving a gun around, maybe you don't want to stop him yourself. But calling in the gang of violent thugs. They're going to ruin your friend's life. I mean, is this really what his friend wanted? Uh, three and a half years in prison? Um, you know, being put into a, a state rape cage is not a solution for a guy who has a gun. I mean, and if he was acting violently, shouldn't his charge be acting violently, not having a gun? Why is that even a charge? Just possession of a gun. You know, banning guns started from the slave days when white people banned black people, people from owning guns. So it was like a control thing, like we're allowed to have them and you're not. So we're allowed to protect ourselves and you're not. And we're powerful and you're not. Well, what's the difference between the authorities now saying, well, you can't have a gun, but we can have all the guns. You can't have a single pistol on your hip, but we can have nuclear weapons. Let that sink in for a minute. The federal government can have nuclear weapons that it uses and has used and has threatened to use, but you can't have a pistol in your pocket. Oh, no, you're too dangerous for that. Oh, because you've been slapped with a label like felon. Oh, well, then I guess you don't have any rights. I guess you're just three-fifths of a man, aren't you? Yeah, when you're a felon because you can't vote, you can't hold a firearm. You have no right to self-defense. You're less than human, really. Ridiculous. You know, this rapper is is a popular artist. Could, in those three years and three months, be producing who knows how many singles or albums to bring people years of enjoyment, to express something unique about the world. But no, instead he's going to be sitting in a concrete cell punished for a victimless crime. I'm frustrated. I don't want Gucci Mane to go to jail. Now, where are his friends standing up, for, or his fans standing up for him, saying, you know, to go easy on him, to go light, to, to reduce his sentence, to um, dismiss the charge, fighting for better gun laws? I mean, do you think it'll ever come the time when, like, rappers or the rap community or people who you know, enjoy. I don't see a lot of crossover between the, the rap community and the pro-gun community. Seems to me the pro-gun community is a bunch of um, hicks. You know, if you'll excuse my, my language. You know, and I would say I'm part of the gun community, so, you know, I know there are exceptions to that. We're not all hicks. But for the most part, that's what it's like, and I'd like to see more, like, rappers. If you guys, I mean, you guys are really getting hit hard by um, the gun possession charges and convicted felon stuff, like, I don't know. I guess people just don't want to move to New Hampshire or to Vermont and places that have better gun freedom.
That's because that's what it would take. There's there's no enhancing the gun freedom where you are already at. You're in Florida. You're in New York. Forget about it. You're in California. No. But there are places that have firearm freedom, and if that's something that's important to you, maybe you should consider moving, voting with your feet. You know, there was an interesting uh, thing that happened recently, speaking of New Hampshire and them rewriting the laws. You know, I talk about how they have good firearm freedom here, but the New Hampshire Firearms Coalition sent out a press release two weeks ago saying, action needed, bad changes to carry license application. And uh, the author, um, Jonathan Evans, the president of the New Hampshire Firearms Coalition, writes, quote, As I write this letter, your rights are under direct attack. Without notice and without prior so solicitation of comments from the public, a bureaucrat in Concord, that's the capital in New Hampshire, has exceeded his statutory authority and added new requirements to the New Hampshire pistol, revolver, concealed carry license process. In the past, we've warned you about legislative proposals that give too much discretionary power to bureaucrats because they're unaccountable to the electorate. It's why we've fought so hard for things like shall-issue licensing, and it's why we ask you to attend committee hearings in Concord to provide legislatures with the perspective of the law-abiding gun owner. But we live in troubling times where lawlessness and disregard for established procedures have become the rule. You see, cynical politicians taking their lead from President Obama and the Chicago-style tactics he's applied in Washington have decided that, with a phone and a pen, and without legislative authority, they can instead just make up the rules as they go along. It disgusts me to report this brand of lawlessness has now reached all the way to Concord. Last week, three new questions mysteriously appeared on the New Hampshire Pistol and Revolver License Application Form, two of which are irrelevant to the statute and invite rogue police chiefs to deny, to deny permits for flimsy, unsubstantial reasons. Quote, Did the TSA ever mistake you for someone on the terrorism watch lists? Were you ever denied a pistol license in California or New York because the police chief didn't think you needed to carry a gun? Did you forget to write down the details of a Massachusetts pistol license you had back in the 80s? If so, these changes to the application form make it so a New Hampshire police department could deny your application, even though none of these disqualifies you from receiving a license under the law. And it gets worse. The previous application contained something on the back of the form that has now been removed. An important protection of your rights. It seems like it's going this way. These bureaucrats think that they can get one over on you by changing some of the, some of the language on these application forms. There shouldn't be an application. You have a right to self-defense. Firearms are under attack in New Hampshire. I am reading from a blog of the New Hampshire Firearms Coalition, New Hampshire's only no-compromise gun rights organization. No compromise, that is, unless they're asking the government to change their own rules. I have a little bit of beef with the solutions proposed by this organization, but hey, I realize I'm a little unconventional. Here's what they propose. They say it gets worse. They're talking about uh, a couple of questions have been added to the New Hampshire pistol application license. So, you know, New Hampshire is one of those states where it's you can walk around with a gun on your hip loaded, no problem, no questions asked, no permit required. But if you want to put that gun in your pocket or if you want to put a jacket on and the gun is covered up, well, now it's concealed and you need a concealed carry license. Should be no problem for most people to get. You apply at your local police department, pay 10 bucks, fill out a form, shall be issued within 10 days. Now, for people like me, sometimes there's a hang-up where they, the police chief says, well, I don't like you, so I'm just going to say no. Um, you know, And then you have to fight that in court. You have to appeal to the local uh, court. But now there's a new question, three new questions that have been added to the application form totally quietly, totally silently. The politicians did this of their own accord and then didn't tell anyone, thinking it would just get squeezed through. Well, the New Hampshire... Firearms Coalition noticed 
and is getting loud about it. Here's what they say. It gets worse. The previous application contained this on the back. Quote, applicants not prohibited under federal law or New Hampshire law from possession of a firearm shall be deemed suitable persons and the license shall be issued unless the applicant is so prohibited from possessing a firearm. The burden is on the licensing entity to prove by clear and convincing proof that the applicant is so prohibited from possessing a firearm. Removing this clear explanation from the form puts the applicant in the dark and opens the door for rogue anti-gun police chiefs to unfairly deny applications in convention contravention of the law. <clears throat> Excuse me, yes, that's exactly what's happened here in Keene. If you want to support my fight against the Keene Police Department on this very issue, you can do so by going to gofundme.com slash gunrights. That's gofundme.com slash gunrights. There you can learn all about my application, why it was denied, you can get the full um, explanation all there. Uh, the letter from the chief of police saying I'm a quote assaultive or th I've engaged in quote assaultive or threatening behavior. Um, that's not true, and you know I'm gonna have my day in court September 8th. So follow that. We need you. Uh, this is the this is the part that I disagree with. This is the solutions part of the New Hampshire Firearms Coalition. They say we have to draw a line and we have to do it now. The lawlessness must stop. We have to send a message to the bureaucrats in Concord that we will not abide by this attempt at enacting their own gun control agenda, least of all without notice, public comment, or statutory authority. We need you to call the commission of the New Hampshire Department of Safety, John J. Bartholomew, and demand the prior pistol and revolver license application, the one that has helped make New Hampshire one of the safest places in the country and the world be immediately reinstated. And this is what rings to me of feeble, weak begging. It's um, shameful, it's slave-like to say, oh please Mr. Commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Safety, John J. Bartholomew, sir, please reinstate the old pistol application form so that I can apply using your old piece of paper instead of your new one. I mean, what is the freaking difference if you're asking some authority for permission to do something? Oh, there's the difference because of a couple of words on the paper asking a couple of questions? I mean, yeah, I get it. There is a difference. It's going to be a little bit easier if the application doesn't contain the extra questions. And if it says that applicants, you know, not prohibited under federal or New Hampshire law from possession of a firearm shall be deemed suitable. You know, that makes it crystal clear. I was... Um, considered an unsuitable person by the chief of police and that's totally subjective I mean there's no hard and fast rule about what is a suitable person and what is not he can just make stuff up and then we have to fight it out in court which is going to cost me thousands of dollars already has cost me over two thousand dollars and you know that's that's not justice when you have to buy your rights that's not freedom so anyway, this is a, a troubling issue. Yeah, it's happening in New Hampshire, and this is a place where we have to make sure that firearms freedoms are protected. But even if they're not, even if the state government and the federal government say no guns, this is still a place where people print their own guns with 3D printers. This is still a place where people peacefully disobey the edicts of government. So where there might not be firearms freedom on paper, but you can bet these homes in New Hampshire are going to be stocked with firearms. <laughs> That's not changing. Um, you know, they can change the law, but they're not going to change the culture, at least not that quickly.